So this is how you uh, express inheritance in Java and C++. So if a button uh, is a component and uh, uh, we want to express this uh, type of relationship uh, in Java, uh, what we do is uh, we use the extends keyword. This is keyword in Java programming language where we say, okay, let's... Uh, so the idea is that let's take everything from here, from this class, which is defined somewhere else, um, and uh, sort of like bring everything from, from here into our new class. So it's almost like copy and paste this in the body of the button. Because uh, as we discussed before, at runtime, the component will be present inside the button. But it allows to, uh, allows, uh, to design uh, both classes independently, and that's kind of nice. So that uh, improves the clarity of the design because component is just a common um, a set of uh, properties and uh, operations which are present in all uh, type of uh, uh, user interface components, not just a single button class. So in C++, uh, instead of the extends, we use the column uh, punctuation symbol and typically it's combine, uh, combined with the type of inheritance uh, uh, public or private um, and uh, the most it's so that this uh, equivalent the equivalent of java extends is colon public in c++ and again i apologize there should be a semicolon right here in the syntax of c++ class declaration like this so right here uh, C++ requires semicolon in its syntax. So uh, relationships uh, can be uh, expressed as public, uh, private, protected, and friend in C++ uh, as, an, as we move along through different types of examples um, of design patterns. So perhaps we will be able to experience uh, the difference between those. Uh, right now we're just going to practically focus on uh, specific associations, but uh, uh, in general uh, there could be a different level of access uh, provided by the components um, of the class. Um, part of their declaration could be a restriction of their use. Uh, public is always ac accessible, private is accessible only inside the class and not outside of the class. Friend could be designated in C++ that, for instance, uh, one class could become friend of another class, and therefore it will be uh, it will be allowed to access um, um, uh, components of this class. Um, in Java, uh, this is when we don't provide public, protected, um, or private uh, at all. It's an equivalent of a friendship in Java, um, and. Uh, uh, also, uh, protected uh, is used in inheritance. Basically, if you want to uh, keep something private inside the component, but still make it accessible inside the button, it can be um, declared uh, declared uh, protected. Protected becomes private on the outside, but public and accessible inside the inheritance hierarchy. All object-oriented uh, languages support something that's called abstract operations. So uh, abstract operations or abstract methods represents uh, responsibility. So typically what happens is that we uh, create a concept of some sort. Um, we call it an interface and we specify a set of methods or operations and uh, we just list them but we don't define them. Okay, and then um, uh, we use uh, inheritance relationship or interface implementation relationship then and say that another class will actually provide concrete implementation of these methods. Uh, for example, uh, with uh, um, uh, user interface component uh, button and panel uh, example, they all could have uh, basically a, uh, an operation that's called draw, right? So we can uh, draw this, we can draw uh, this. 
and uh, we can also specify draw as an abstract operation at component level for drawing the component. So here this operation would simply be using a semicolon specifying that this operation is abstract operation. It's only specifying that the component can be drawn. However, the actual implementation of the draw at the level of the button and at the level of, um, of uh, the panel uh, will be unique. And so here will be written actual code how to display button on the screen and how to draw and display the panel on the screen. But through this commonality, it's possible to uh, share button or panel as a component with uh, another part of the system somewhere. And that part of the system will be able to call the draw and this draw call will be dispatched to the actual component type. So this is a polymorphic behavior uh, uh, definition. Uh, but uh, here, uh, the, this starts with an idea of abstract methods. So abstract methods represent some sort of responsibility. So in that case, comp user interface component is responsible for providing an operation named draw, right, to display the component. Non-abstract methods at the level of the button and the panel implement the actual ca capability, right? So declaring a responsibility and implementing it as, as capability is a uh, very standard idea of providing interesting forms of behaviors at runtime, uh, which are typically referred to as uh, polymorphic behaviors. So abstract methods, uh, methods or operation have to be overridden in descendant classes, right? So if declared at the component level, then it has to be provided by the button. And for each responsibility of the abstract method, uh, a corresponding capability has to be provided. In other words, if we have uh, these, uh, uh, these concepts, we have the component and the button, and for whatever reason we declared, to, we declared and added an abstract operation, uh, we must provide the actual concrete implementation of this operation in the button uh, uh, class because that's just the rule of the language and the rule of inheritance. Inheritance allows abstract methods to be declared but not defined at the top of the hierarchy but, uh, but at the level of concrete uh, versions of uh, these components, buttons, panels, uh, text boxes, scroll bars, and so forth. All of these abstract operations, if they are present in the component, have to be provided in concrete form, specifying exactly how we're going to do this in the button, in the panel, and then all components can be uniformly processed uh, based on these abstract method declarations at the, at the top of the hierarchy. We'll see some examples of that in the future. Constructors of objects cannot be abstract and that's uh, because uh, when we create the component, right, uh, when we actually uh, create the component uh, and, and component can be like a placeholder uh, for buttons, panels and other types of gadgets present in user interface. But when we actually create them, we have to create specific um, instances. So constructors uh, cannot be abstract. It's just a typical approach in uh, modern object-oriented languages. Classes uh, become abstract as soon as uh, there's, there's at least one abstract method uh, present uh, in the class. Abstractness of a class means that, uh, that the instance of the class, an object of that class, can no longer be created only concrete versions of that class uh, can be uh, derived from the abstract class and be created. So it is prohibited to create object of abstract classes and um, uh, it's possible to add variables um, uh, or a reference or pointer to abstract class type. Um, so uh, abstract classes can have data members but uh, also uh, non-abstract methods can also be present there and uh, this is how you would do it in Java. So print document um, 
um, becomes an abstract class as soon as one abstract operation is added to this class. So once you start using abstract keyword uh, with uh, this operation, the entire class becomes abstract. Um, and uh, in C++, it's uh, very similar. The abstract keyword is replaced by the virtual keyword. So this class document becomes abstract because we have a print method which is a virtual but also pure which means that uh, it has no implementation this is the syntax of a pure virtual method which is abstract method uh, in c++ of course methods are called functions uh, in c++ technically speaking we call them member functions so this would be this print would be an example of a, uh, um, a virtual a member function of print and also um, we could say pure virtual uh, member function named print inside class document. The interface uh, is uh, an example of a class that is made up only from uh, abstract methods or abstract uh, operations. So uh, interfaces have to be extended through inheritance otherwise um, it's impossible to use them. So the descendant can be an interface uh, or abstract class or non-abstract class. So uh, interfaces can be formally declared in Java using the interface keyword. So interface in Java only declares uh, like, a, like a contract. Uh, it says that a container will have uh, an, um, an operation named put object into the container and get object of that, uh, from this container. Okay, so that's that's an idea. So these semicolons indicate that at the level of the, of the container, uh, we don't have uh, any definition of uh, these two operations, uh, put and get. However, if we derive, so if container uh, is declared like this as an interface, we can have declare our, our examples of list that we talked right here. So this is the container and the list uh, we may uh, make it so that it implements this interface and interface implementation is actually using this kind of notation the punctured line uh, it's similar to inheritance but uh, this is an implementation relationship basically all all methods all uh, operations uh, that uh, are abstract and are present at the container level um, will be uh, implemented uh, at the list level uh, and there will be concrete implementations of the list uh, methods uh, right here so interfaces are very popular as we step through uh, various types of designs we will uh, start putting together interfaces and introduce uh, the usefulness of in uh, interfaces through uh, through specific examples In C++, there is no keyword uh, for interface. It is simply, in, in C++, if you would like to rely on interfaces, you just declare a class uh, and you use uh, pure virtual methods. So you use the virtual keyword when you're declaring uh, a method such as put and get, which are operations of the container. Um, and uh, you use the syntax to say equals zero. It means that intentionally we tell the C++ compiler that this, uh, these two uh, operations are not going to be defined uh, in this class. Instead, once again, there will be some sort of concrete, so this is our container um, uh, interface in C++, and there will be a concrete um, collection or, or list or some other type of um, uh, concrete container which will be implementing uh, this specific interface. So let's call it a list, uh, for example. Polymorphism is when uh, object is sending a message uh, but uh, doesn't know uh, what exact uh, subclass of the recipient uh, it's sending that message to. So um, to uh, give you an example with um, components of user interface, 
uh, for instance, we have a component. And components can be buttons, right? So we can have a button as a component, a panel as a component, and a text box as a component, and a scroll bar also as a, as a component. And they're all uh, defined as uh, um, components of a user interface. Now, we want uh, to use these components in the design of a window. So we have a window class. And window wants to be able to utilize collections of buttons and panels and text boxes and scroll bars. So instead of having a separate uh, association with buttons uh, and panels and so forth, instead, a window is using association with the, uh, with the component. And we can have that win uh, we can specify in this diagram that window can have multiple, right? We use this multiplicity, this asterisk. We can say that window can have multiple components. So window essentially has a list of components in its implementation. So then we want to be able to draw buttons, uh, um, panels, uh, text boxes, and scroll bars. So we declare a draw operation right here at the level of the component class. And concrete implementation of draw method uh, at the level of each uh, concrete uh, user interface component. And this, um, when the window wants to display all of this, it'll just kind of iterate through each instance of the uh, of the um, uh, component, user interface component, and tell it draw, 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 and at runtime. A polymorphic uh, implementation will dispatch um, windows calls into draw basically the window will be sending a message to every component that let's right now make a drawing like display itself on the screen at runtime polymorphic mechanisms of uh, programming language will dispatch the calls if component is a button the, this call will be magically dispatched into the draw method of the button or the panel if this is the panel or text box or scroll bar and uh, so this is uh, this is what we call polymorphic behavior is that this object window sends a message such as draw to a component but it doesn't really know at the time when it sends this message um, draw uh, to each component it really doesn't know who is going to be what kind of recipient is this is this a button or panel or text box it will be uh, sort of the 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 the, the call into correct uh, method will be dispatched at uh, runtime so polymorphism is actually most useful if controlled through in, in inheritance. Uh, and of course, this is inheritance right here. So all of these user interface gadgets inherit themselves from, from the user interface component. And that makes it possible to create collection of all of these components, contain it inside the window, and be able to dispatch the idea of uh, uh, basically stimulus or a uniform message to all of these different types of gadgets present on the screen, but they all will respond very uniformly to this. So this is like, so this is the the place. Uh, this is why we 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 make it uh, uh, this term polymorphism. Essentially, the same line of code, the same uh, design, uh, will have different uh, polymorphic uh, behavior at runtime. So basically. Or polymorphism is is many forms so the same line of code will behave differently specific to the kind of object which is underlying um, a specific object reference at any given time so inheritance is basically is is the the foundation the structure that provides uh, inside uh, object-oriented programming language it provides the foundation the basis for polymorphic uh, behavior uh, during runtime. Again, more about this in the future when we talk about uh, 
inheritance um, and the design patterns that are relying on inheritance.